Thank you for joining St. Andrew Lutheran Church online. It's great to have you with us. I'm Peter Johnson, Interim Senior Pastor. You're welcome to join us on Sunday mornings either at 9 o'clock or 10.30. Any contributions you make during this broadcast also will bolster St. Andrew's ministry as well as our outreach ministry to you through this live stream. Thank you for being here. Welcome and God bless.
Good evening, and welcome to our Good Friday service here at St. Andrew. Tonight, you will have a chance to bear the cross. In a few moments, a large wooden cross will be standing here before you where you can exchange and carry it yourselves. It will remain in this spot throughout tonight's service, and at any point, you your whole family or any combination are invited to come and hold it. Simply rise from your seats informally and relieve the person already holding it by tapping them on the shoulder. Three or four people or more can do this at one time. And please place forward, face forward at the front as you hold it up and trust that another person will come and replace you. Know that at the end of the service, the cross will be brought forward to the front where it will be turned upright. You may come down to the cross at that time for private prayer after the service if you would like. Otherwise, you can depart in silence. Again, welcome to our Good Friday service this evening. Please stand as you are able for confession and forgiveness. On this day, looking to the cross, we gather to acknowledge the ways that we have broken the world. Ways of isolation, selfishness, and hoarding. Ways of fear and hunger for influence. Ways of self-doubt, ways of sin. We gather to acknowledge the ways that the world has broken us. Ways of division and might makes right. Ways of inequity and injustice, ways of empire, ways of sin. The way of the cross calls us to confess our sin, trusting in God's mercy on this day and every day. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, full of mercy and abounding in steadfast love. Merciful God, we confess to you that we are in bondage to sin and cannot fear ourselves. We are broken by the world and in our fear and isolation, we continue to fracture our relationships, our homes, and in your world. Forgive our sin, the things we have done, and the things we have left undone. Receive us in our vulnerability by the love of Christ. Amen. The way of the cross is the way of the broken. In our vulnerability, Christ is broken. In our fear, Christ is broken. In our anguish and despair, Christ is broken. With the sign of the cross and the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. No longer bound to the ways of the world, no longer held by the ways of sin. We are free to love with every ounce of our being God's broken world. So love more, fear less, see that Jesus the Christ is broken for you. You may be seated.
Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed. They spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> soldiers. Yes, soldiers. By the time they arrived in the courtyard of the palace of the governor, there were 480 more of them. Soldiers. Military were leading a quiet man, a silent man, to death. His name? Jesus. Jesus, Savior, Messiah, Son of God. But to the crowds that day, a taunting, a mocking king of the Jews. The scene is raw. It's exposed. It's unflinching. Hundreds of soldiers and Jesus. Just a verse before, the crowds had shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! And now this, and we cry out this night, Jesus, Jesus, say something! Say anything! Do something! We watch horrified and helpless as the soldiers strip him, twist thorns into a crown, and dress him in a purple cloak. They salute him, hail, king of the Jews, and they strike his head. They spit on him and kneel before this king, mocking him. And Jesus is quiet in a deafening sort of way. They strip him again. Now dressed in the clothes of his trial, they lead him out to crucify him. There's still no cross, no mercy, no sound, but of spitting and taunts and the cruel beating of the Son of God. What had he done? This man, soon to die, had fed 5,000 hungry people and then 4,000 more. He had healed and cast out demons. A leper had been freed of his disease. The deaf could hear. The blind could see. Those possessed released. And yet the crowds cried out, crucify him. And the soldiers, so many of them, led him to his death. Jesus, say something. Do something. Three days a week, I am at the Midway Y in St. Paul. It's right there on University Avenue. As I diligently do my bicep curls and my tricep extensions, I watch light rail fly by first this way and then that. But what captures my attention is the lineup of people across the street. Sometimes that line stretches all around the block. They are some of the city's hungry, your neighbors and mine. Over the past months, I watched the building be repurposed. It's now flashy, bright orange and blue, yellow and red. But it's simply a backdrop to the people bundled in blankets and coats, some just shivering, some with carts, boots on, waiting. And I think about this quiet, speechless Jesus 
and I peek to the end of the story when the women come quietly too with spices and discover that the stone has been rolled away, their Jesus gone, and the announcement still echoes around the world, he's not here. Go and tell, he's already ahead of you. Even now, this Jesus has gone ahead of us. Bearing the scars of a crown of thorns, the wounds of beating, the emotional scars of mocking, the spitting. But this one has gone ahead of us and is there in that line on University Avenue and carries our wounds, our demons and scars, yours and mine, quietly leading us into a world full of resurrection. Oh, make me thine forever. Let me never, never outlive my love for thee. But now, now, we must be off to the cross. Our reading continues. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, 
which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever seen a child openly mocked Bullied, abused, taunted. The soldiers, of course, mocked him. They put purple cloth, the sign of royalty. They said, hail, king of the Jews, a greeting left only for Caesar himself. They put a crown on his head crown of thorns. They beat him. They spat on him. They knelt down before him in some absurd performance and left a sign that read, King of the Jews. Have you ever seen a child openly mocked, bullied, abused, taunted. The soldiers walked him to the cross, a punishment that was uncommon in the Roman world, reserved only for those who were enemies of the state. They hung him on the cross with one on each side. Have you ever seen a child openly mocked, abused, bullied, taunted? The passers-by next, those who were going along in their daily lives, perhaps they heard all of the parade the previous week. Perhaps they had heard of the stories that Jesus had told. Perhaps they had heard of the miracles. But on this day, they walked by. Aha! You who would destroy the temple, this home of God among us, the place where our people reside, the center of our culture, the center of our lives, you would tear it down and build it in three days? Have you ever seen a child openly mocked, abused, bullied, taunted? The chief priests, the scribes, the religious insiders who knew what Jesus was saying, who knew the stories that he was slinging, who knew the meaning that he was making, the chief priests and the scribes looked at Jesus and spat in their own way. 
He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we might see and believe. Oddly enough, Jesus was taunted, tormented, pushed to the edge of belief at the beginning of this gospel by none other than Satan himself. Have you ever seen a child openly mocked, bullied, abused, taunted? Even those on his left and on his right, hanging with their last remaining breath. Use their last ounce of energy, their final pulse on this earth to taunt him. Have you ever seen a child openly mocked, abused, bullied, Humiliation would humble Jesus, but the humiliation that the empire would wield would humble itself in the process. It would rattle the powerful and shake the chains of death itself. Have you ever seen a child openly mocked, abused, bullied, tormented? What did you do? Some chapters, some verses, some books earlier in the scripture. God responds to those who will taunt, who will bully, who will torment with a single phrase. Who is this that darkens the counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Have you ever seen a child openly mocked, abused, bullied, Haunted. What will you do?
Our reading continues from Mark chapter 15. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabathani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. When some of the bystanders heard it, someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he had breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in the Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Weak. Vulnerable. Spent, done, that was all. That was all Jesus had to say or do. So weak. We live in a world where we are told to be strong. We are told to climb ladders of success, of power, and of triumph. We are told to aim for the stars, and maybe you'll hit the moon. Jesus was weak, vulnerable, needy, real. We put people on pedestals in our culture and in our world because they are triumphant, they are achievers, they are notable. We watch the movies and applaud the Meryl Streeps and the Jack Nicholsons. We look at scientists and say to Einstein and Darwin, well done. We sing songs of Beethoven and Bach the pinnacle of music, artists like da Vinci and Picasso, athletes like Jordan and Brady, generals like Eisenhower and Schwarzkopf, strong, mighty, achievers, and doers, successful, not weak, not done. We could very easily just let Jesus be all-powerful. We are told in the beginning of the Gospel of John that the Word was present at the creation of the world. The miracle worker that he was, the heads that he turned the demons that he called out, the feedings and the hungry that he relieved. That triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem just this past Sunday that we call Palm Sunday, there he goes, almighty and powerful. That's what we like. And the growing crowds that surrounded and received him That's the other 
Jesus. We set aside tonight those outward signs of power. And tonight we embrace Jesus' weakness, his humility, his self-sacrifice, his call in the world we embrace. This cross that is behind me and that we carry here tonight, we are taught that this is what makes Jesus special. No other religion of the world has a suffering servant for the sake of humanity the way Jesus sacrificed himself for our forgiveness and for our hope. He gave up everything for the sake of others on the cross. His greatest contribution And so, my friends, we experience solidarity with God in faraway places, on the streets of Port-au-Prince where people flee the gains, on the streets of Gaza or in Ukraine, families who lost their loved ones beneath that bridge in Baltimore. God sees and God knows it all in those faraway places far more than I could ever understand or conceive of. Solidarity, Jesus, loving, weak, knowing, and also up close in those hospital rooms and doctors' offices. If we're there, Jesus is there. And those study carols, when we're getting ready for those exams, as we fight our addictions, as we struggle with episodes of self-doubt, when we desire comfort and security and instead face uncertain futures, whatever they may be, only you can claim the struggles through which you have passed or that you currently dwell within. But suffering and neediness, pain and sin that Jesus experienced means that we don't need to do this alone. Our God, the Son of God, our Savior Jesus comes alongside. It is what makes this day good, as hard as it is. We conclude our service today with the Lord's Prayer that we whisper humbly, reverently, as we gather here in the sadness and in the amazement of how God could come alongside me and you. We depart in silence to make our way into the darkness of the night. It's hard not to talk to our friends as we leave the sanctuary. But Jesus is in the tomb. He loves us. He cares for us, and he accompanies us in our darknesses. Pray with me. Come, Lord Jesus, walk with us, share with us, take us by the hand, and lead us to life in you. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, your son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With a whisper, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, 